Welcome to EF Driving Test Centre. Okay, as you can see, very small car park. We're going to do EF Driving Test Centre route. You'll start your driving test from the test centre. By the way, my name's Scott. Welcome to the channel. Please do leave a like. This is how you do the reverse bay parking. It's very difficult. Not a lot of room here. Make sure you do the observations before reversing. Use your cheat code. Use your mirrors. See the bays. See the lines. Gently, gently. Nice and slow. And remember again, just have another look around on the observations. So at the start, the beginning and the end. That's the manoeuvre done. Now if you're starting your driving test exam, I'll say, right, I'd like you to exit the car park. Be very careful about these curbs. Look, my back tire's almost popping up against the curb here on the left. Take your time to just slowly edge out the test centre. And at the end, I'll remind us to slowly come back in at the end of the road, turn right. Now you're most likely to start the driving test with the sat nav. So the sat nav will give you the directions for 50% of your driving test. The other 50% will be the examiner giving you the driving directions. And around about turn right, third exit. Mirrors, signal, speed. Most important part about roundabouts is the approaching speed. Make sure you approach at a sensible speed. This will give you enough time to react. Now we're following signs of TEM speed. So another part of doing the independent drive is following signs or following sat nav. So the sign says TEM speed's on the right, mirror, mirror, signal right. Look at this line on the right. Keep to this line on the right. You see this? I don't even want to drive here because there's glass and stone and no one drives here. This is where you need to drive, far right lane. Look for the road marking. Stay on the far right lane on the roundabout because there are no road markings. This is the horse roundabout, exit one, exit two. As soon as you pass exit two, mirror, mirror, signal left for exit three and glide off or spiral out from the roundabout. So if your mirror checks on your signal, start to go towards the exit as if it was a fire exit. You're just gonna go straight towards the exit. The next roundabout, I'm not gonna follow signs anymore. I'm gonna go straight, second exit. Now there used to be a left only arrow on the left lane, it's no longer there. So we can use the left lane to go straight. So always stick to the left lane if you're not sure. Look for road markings. You see it's a straight arrow. Early vision, early decision, no traffic to stop for. Keep the left lane, signal left at the first exit to tell everybody we're gonna take the second exit. 30 miles an hour, speed change. Lots of speed changes here. Erif, Belvedere, they do share the same test routes. So if you're doing a test at Belvedere, this is a good video for you to watch as well. We're now on our way from Erif through to Abbey Wood. Once we reach Abbey Wood, we're gonna be going to the flyover roundabout. It's the biggest roundabout out of all of the roundabouts at Erif or Belvedere. It doesn't have any lane markings, again, like the white line that we see in the center of the road here. It has a crease. So if you could just erase the white line, you see the crease, it's like a color difference between this lighter gray and this sort of scratchy gray or darker gray, if you like, here on the right. So use those creases as lane markings. When we reach the flyover roundabout, we'll have a look at that together. Quick show me question, just watching the front window. On your driving test, your examiner will ask you a tell me question at the beginning and show me question while you're driving. Now there's a common misconception, there's quite a few, I'll mention them in this video, um, that you can fail for not having two hands on the steering wheel. That's not true. As long as you keep control of the vehicle, that's what the examiners need to see. Roundabout straight ahead, remember to slow down that speed on the approach. We're doing maybe a, a jogging speed on the approach to this roundabout. Now we're going to exit a little quicker. So slow at the beginning, fast at the end. Again, same here at this roundabout, just slowing down, we're going from like superhuman running speed to running normal speed, jogging speed. Yeah, look at this, lovely, safe, and then increase that speed as we exit the roundabout. Because there's one lane, 
going to call that a mini roundabout. There's not a lot of room, so steering is more important than the signal. So if you have a one lane roundabout, mini roundabout, you wouldn't necessarily need to signal for the exit, okay? Up ahead we have a horse. Now, we've got to keep a good distance from the horse, similar to bicycles. It's a 1.5 meter clearance. So if you can imagine the width of this car in front is about two meters. So about three quarters of a car away from the horse. If we can't do that for the horse or for the bicycle on our driving test, then we must stay behind the horse or behind the bicycle until there's a safe enough distance to overtake. And another common misconception is that you cannot fail for the show me tell me question. That's not true. It's pretty much true that you can't fail for the tell me question, which is at the start of the test. The show me question, you'll have to demonstrate while driving. What happens a lot is people get a bit nervous on a driving test. Maybe they forget where the button or switch is. They can lose control of the vehicle, looking down too long for the button or switch, losing focus on the road ahead. Very good way to fail for the show me question. Another very important one is speed. So when people are asked to do the show me tell me question, they slow down to this speed. And then they do the question and then they speed back up again. What's the problem with that you might ask? Well there's traffic behind us. So if we don't need to slow down, we must maintain the speed. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? Nice trailer as well. The horse looks lovely. I know that horse has probably got a special name because it looks so nice. I have no idea what it is. But that's a really nice looking horse. I'm not a big fan of horses either, but that horse looks amazing. I want its hairdo. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so, yeah, just gonna hold back here. We don't have enough space to overtake the horse. Now, what's gonna happen is when we reach this roundabout up ahead, just before the roundabout, you can see the speed change. So as we exit the test center onto the dual carriageway, there's one speed there. As we exit that on the roundabout, there's a speed change to this road. And then as we finish this road, look at this, another speed change just here. So do keep your eyes peeled for that. So call back to earlier, we talked about the speed changes. There are a lot of different speed changes at Era for Belvedere. Now we're gonna be going towards Thamesmead Central, which is the Abbey Wood flyover roundabout. So we're gonna be heading right on this roundabout, which will be the third exit. When we reach the flyover roundabout, we're gonna take a third exit again. That's a really big roundabout, multiple lanes, and very complicated. So we're gonna go have a good look at that. We talked about the uh, no lane markings as well. So we're just gonna have a look at the creases and use those as lane markings. I'm just gonna watch the horse just to make sure it does go left. Yeah, okay, we're good for the horse. And keep that right signal on until we reach the second exit. Now we signal left at the second exit. And you see how we're spiraling over from the inside lane on the roundabout, spiraling to the outside lane as we exit. Bus lane, got to keep my lead, lead vehicle position here. So if we're in front of the vehicle as we change lanes, I would encourage you to keep that lead vehicle position, stay in front, try to increase the speed as we change lanes, and then change lanes. Speeding up as we change lanes is usually safer. We do need to be careful of speeds. So we had a 20 back there, so just be mindful of 20. And now we've changed again to 30. This, and look, another change here, 40. Remember I called back to that earlier about how many speed changes there are. And we're turning right, no lane marking. This is the flyover roundabout. Remember we, we talked about the approaching speed, the most important part, running, jogging, walking. I have a gap here, so I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna go to the far right lane. So far right lane, far right lane. Easy to remember, right signal. Pass exit one, because it's roundabout so big, I wanna think about moving out a little bit to the middle now. So I'm actually gonna move out to the middle lane. I'm gonna cancel that signal. I need signal to change one lane. Now I'm going to put the left signal back on again. Look at the creases. So you might see the creases. So I'll change one, two, three, 
four lanes. I come from the far right lane, lane one, two, three in the middle, four far left. So there's a multiple lane change there as we exit on that huge dual carriageway roundabout. Abbeywood flyover roundabout. Now we're approaching onto the dual carriageway, which takes us back towards the test centre. We want to increase our speed to the maximum limit if it's safe to do so, which is a 50 mile an hour limit here. We're currently doing 45. As you can see, the traffic there is doing 50. So we probably want to go a bit faster like that vehicle, ideally, to join onto the dual carriageway. Always match your speed to the traffic that you're joining. It's like being in a river, you're just jumping in and going with the flow, okay? It's like we were talking about the lead vehicle and changing lanes. Keep the flow, keep the speed, change lanes, join the dual carriageway. It's safe with your speed. That's, that's what you need to do, look at that. So in the case of an emergency, pull over, has warning lights, if safe, pull up, stop, just like this gentleman. Place the cones, if you've got them, or a warning triangle. Most of Europe, it's mandatory. You have to have this warning triangle in your car. UK, you don't, okay? If you've got one, high res jacket, warning triangle out the back, touch it on the Fury test, and then wait for assistance, I guess, unless you can fix um, whatever's happened by yourself. If you can, you're free with me. Yeah, I said it. Cancel me, okay. Okay. Right, here we are. We're back to my favourite roundabout. Another thing I'll get cancelled for if I say that, so I won't. Taking the first exit, turning left. Woo! It's getting warm. And then staying in the centre lane. The left lane is the left only. Have a look at the road markings. We've got all these white lines and white arrows here to help us. The next roundabout would be the test centre roundabout, which would be the... <laughs> yeah, that's the horse roundabout. That's my impression of a horse. Leave it in the comment section down below. I won't read it. Okay, at the horse roundabout, we're just going to do a nice simple left turn back to the test center. First exit turning left, mirror, mirror, signal left. And there's the horse. First roundabout we did as we came, actually second, because there's a mini roundabout we'll go see in a sec, but the first major roundabout. Remember we looked at the road markings again, so this, to recap on this video, multiple lane roundabouts, dual carriageways, speed changing, all about road markings. If you want help with the roundabouts, yes the road markings are important, but the most important part is the approaching speeds. This is the mini roundabout. So if we approach from that superhuman running speed to normal running speed to jogging speed as we approach the roundabout, maybe walking speed, maybe stopping, depending on how much visibility there is, then the rest of it just flows. Here I cannot go ahead. There's an oncoming vehicle, there's a huge lorry in front of me, there's no room for me to get through there. So I'm going to wait here, plenty of space for me and plenty of space for them. But I'm not going to go kiss the curb. I don't want to give them the impression I'm parking. I'm just going to give them enough room to get through. Okay, we're going back into the test center to finish off the test. So you do your mirrors, you do signals, and then you turn here. But obviously I can't turn here. Well, I can, but I'm just going to go into a gate. We saw the car park earlier, so you know what that's all about. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. We're going to do one more here at Erif, then we'll move on to Belvedere. So if you're looking for Belvedere, there'll be a couple of videos on those a little bit later on the channel. Until then, guys, stay safe. See you next time.